Hello, the macro I have for you today is a complicated one and I would love to give you a detailed description of why. If you want that, stick around to the end of the video where I'll talk about the problems I encountered and the technical description of what's going on in the macro. But let's just get started right away. The goal of this macro is to create focus palettes off of an effect. So you have an effect, uh, that effect is mirrored across to the center line of your stage and you slow the effect to zero and you use that to generate focus palettes. In a moment we'll get started, but I have just two big disclaimers, uh, maybe three big disclaimers. Uh, one, uh, this is a EOS 3.0 only macro, and that is because the workarounds I had to use exist only in EOS 3.0. Uh, the second disclaimer is that you need to put your fixtures into the augmented visualizers at least a little bit. Uh, you need to give them position data, um, and this is to make one of the workarounds work. Otherwise, the macro unfortunately does not work as intended. And the last disclaimer is there is a lot of jank to this uh, macro that is happening in the background. And again, the detailed description for that will happen at the end of the video rather than boring you right now. Um, but just know that uh, because of some of the limitations in EOS software, I had to get very, very creative with how I did things. Let's get started. So right away, uh, what you'll need to do is when you download the show file that's located in the description of this video, you'll need to import macro 1001 and 1002, effect 1001 and 1002, and magic sheet 1001. And that's this magic sheet that you're seeing on your screen in front of you. It has a detailed description of exactly what happens and the input required from you. Uh, the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to uh, select your fixtures and create group 1000. Group 1000 is going to be the base group of all of the, that, that you're going to generate focus palettes off of. And the way this needs to work is that you need to select them uh, in a mirrored fashion across stage. So I've gone from bottom to top, bottom to top. And now, because I want uh, this top unit on the last boom, on stage right to be paired with the uh, top unit on stage left, I need to select the top units now going down. Oops, just clear that out and select and select. And now I have the selection and that's all I need to do. And I just need to record that into group 1000. So now that we have our base group, we're ready to run the macro. So I'm going to type out macro 1001 and hit enter, and it's going to perform several things automatically. And once we have input again, uh, the effect is going to be running. As you can see, it's a symmetrical effect. I can go to my virtual faders, and I can change the FX rate down, and I can slow it way down so we can see what's happening. And now if I go to the stage view, you'll see that we have the effect running, but that's not necessarily the kind of look we're going for. So from here, we can make some modifications. So I'm going to open up effect channels and I'm going to clear my command line and select both effect 1001 and 1002. And I am going to change the H form to be about 20 and I'm gonna change the V form to be about 150. And that's gonna create a very oval shaped effect. And if I were to go to ML controls, you can see what that looks like here. Now we can modify the tilt. So we can tilt it way up out of people's, uh, out of our audience members' eyes perhaps. And uh, the last thing I wanna do is I don't want them hitting the sides of the proscenium like you see that they're hitting the sides here. So what I want to do is I want to fan them center. So I'm going to hit fan, I'm going to hit fan center. And because group 1001, the way it's built is it just took group 1000 and made it into two parts, stage left and stage right, or stage right and stage left. Um, all I have to do is fan center and both sides of the stage will fan into center. So do that and let's grab tilt. Pan, sorry, and that's the wrong way, and we're going the correct way now. 
and that looks much better. Uh, as you can see here, we're that's a pretty good look. Um, and I can go back to my virtual faders, or I have my geo behind me here. I can scroll that speed down to zero, and I think that looks pretty good. And when I am ready to take a snapshot and save that off to a focus palette, I can just hit the macro key because as you see in the bottom left hand corner of the screen, you said it says running macro 1001, press macro to continue. Um, that's just waiting for you to be ready to save it off. So I'm going to hit macro and it's going to save. It's going to wig out a little bit. That's just how it works. Um, but it will uh, go back to being to working. And uh, I can scroll the effect, go back to my virtual fader, scroll it a little bit, wait for something that I like, hit macro again, scroll a little bit, wait for something I like, hit macro again, uh, keep going until your heart's content, um, hit macro whenever you're ready, make some modifications. So maybe I want to go back to effect channels and say, you know, shift clear, effect 1001 plus 1002. I want those to be in a grouping of two. And that looks pretty cool. Um, and I wanna go back to uh, ML controls. I'll show you the stage view. Uh, scroll up the speed a little bit, figure out what I like. And ooh, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna save that. And so I'm gonna hit the macro key. That is how it is done. Uh, do that as many times as you like. Keep going until you feel like you've generated enough looks. And once you are done, you can hit escape to end the cycle of the macro. Once you are fully done with generating these, uh, you can hit macro 1002. And that is going to clean up all the data that is no longer being used. And so what you are left with our focus palettes 1002 and beyond. We can go back to our stage view. We can select group 1000 and we can, uh, let's turn on highlight. And you can see all the looks that we created. And they're all there and they're all saved. Uh, they all have the correct information in them. And that's all there is to it. Uh, that is the entire macro um, a couple things it's possible to do this with other effects uh, the base effects for here are a circle and a reverse circle uh, it's possible to use other forms however you'll have to do the legwork there and uh, work on making those reversible um, it was not possible for me to just simply reverse or use the stock effects in the console like i wanted to because they were slightly askew from each other uh, but that is all. Uh, the show file is located in the description. Uh, I know this is EOS 3.0 only, so your mileage may vary on how useful this is until the public release of the software. And even then, with all the workarounds uh, that are involved behind the scenes in the macro, I wonder how uh, useful it will be to you in general. Uh, you can sort of see, I'll show you here, just how long this macro is and everything that it does. And uh, hopefully some of these workarounds become not workarounds and become things that you can more directly do. And I'll explain those technically in a moment. But if you're stopping here, thank you so much for watching. I hope this is useful for you, or at least it teaches you a few things about macro programming. Thank you so much. Uh, and now if you've stuck around for the technical aspect, here we go. So initially this video series was called Daily Macros and for a while I managed to keep that up but I ran into two problems. Uh, one of which was uh, just figuring out macros to do or things that I wanted to make videos of. Like I didn't want to like take a super basic macro and make a video out of it. And the second part of that is macros that I did want to create uh, videos for uh, turned out to be more complicated and this is one of them. This one took me a good long while and there's a lot of reasons for that um, one is that uh, I had to find a workaround for a lot of things uh, the first problem I ran into was creating groups um, I wanted you to just have the base selection fixtures and that's it no other input from the user required and so 
Uh, in order to do that, I had to find a way to split it stage left and stage right automatically. And uh, the number, pro first problem I ran into was EOS can't take a subgroup and just make that into a group. So if you see here, I select group 1000 and I say uh, offset number of groups two. I can now uh, I can now hit next to select the subgroup 301 through 309, um, but I cannot save that off into a new group. If I were to hit right now record group 1002, uh, it would record the entire group 1000. It records the top level group, um, and the way to get around that was to add, give these intensity values, save these off into a preset recall the group of that preset, and then put that into a group. Um, and that's something I struggled with. Uh, in addition to that, uh, recall, recalling the group of a preset does not save the custom order you have from the group. So for instance, um, this second part of group 1000 is 312 through 310, 315 through 313, like that's a custom order, that's not a numerical order. Um, I had to use a function that was just implemented into EOS 3.0 and that is a recall order from group um, and that is under offset again and you can see order from group here under invert in the bottom left portion of the screen um, and without that I don't know if I could have done the automatic group part of this. Uh, the second problem was perhaps more major and that is the way effects work in EOS is that they are essentially a layer on top of um, your existing focus values. So let's run the macro here once again, because I have my group established, right? Yeah. So I'm going to run the macro. And if you look onto this screen on the live table on the bot, uh, top left, you see this sort of light green, light yellow value that says E1001 and then E1002. That's the effect value. And even though all those uh, folk pan and tilt numbers are changing, uh, they are not actually recordable. So if I were to pause the effect and then select group 1001, record, focus palette, uh, you know, one, it's not going to record these values uh, that you see on stage here. It's not going to record the stage look. It's going to record the base look. Um, you can see this. If I go here, uh, well, this is focus. This is now actually focus palette 1001, um, which is basically its home value. Group 1001 focus palette 1001. Yeah. Um, the usual way around this is that you can make an effect a stop and hold. So if I go to my effect 1001 and I edit the effect and I can say stop and hold. And actually these effects are set up as stop and holds. Um, but uh, the problem with that is stopping an effect that's running on a submaster and then resuming that effect cause all sorts of problems and it wasn't very clean and the way the ideal form of this macro allows you to simply slow the rate of the effect to zero and uh, take a, a literal snapshot of what the, the fit positions that the fixtures are in and using stop and hold that wasn't possible. So the workaround, the other workaround that is EOS 3.0 only is that I am now using the X, Y, and Z focus. Um, as you can see here, they're grayed out. In the top left, in the live table, you can see X focus, Y focus, Z focus. And those are the values I'm actually saving off to the focus palettes. Um, I'm not saving the pan and tilt because, again, pan and tilt wouldn't do anything. I guess because of some feature in the 3.0 software, or maybe it's a bug I'm exploiting, uh, once you save those focus values into a focus palette, it actually retroactively gives it pan and tilt, corresponding pan and tilt values. And that is unfortunately why you need to have 
your X, Y, and uh, your, sorry, your fixtures set up at least somewhat and augmented. I don't think they need to be arranged at all. I haven't tested it, but you can just, you just have to have them in there. Um, and so those are some of the challenges that I encountered. Uh, my frustration comes from uh, that these should be easy fixes, and I know they've been uh, asked for for a while, at least uh, being able to save effect values. Uh, but those are the two things. So being able to take right now, you can see the pan and tilt, for example, um, fixture 301, channel 301, is at negative 25, negative 75. I should be able to save negative 25, negative 75 to a focus palette right here, right now, without any uh, without any workaround, um, but I can't, um, unless I were to literally type it out for every fixture. Uh, the, uh, and then being able to save subgroups off into new groups immediately without having to use the preset workaround. And both of those, I think, are pretty essential, and I hope that they get implemented in the future. Um, I, again, I don't know how useful this macro will be given the amount of uh, jank and the amount of workarounds that are involved and the reliance on EOS 3.0 software, which is not even, um, it's in public beta, but it is not publicly released yet uh, for consoles and they recommend you do not run shows off of it. Uh, but I put so much work into this macro that I thought I would release it anyway, because um, again, I, I did get it working in the ideal fashion, exactly how I had it in my head. I just, you know, struggled a bit to get there. Um, but I learned a few things along the way, which is great. Uh, so uh, again, uh, this is the second closing to this video. Uh, show files in the description. I really hope you enjoy everything that I created here today. I'll switch to full cam for this. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.